This short video shows the installation of a full-size custom Euro bracket and cover on the rear of our Audi. It seems the Audi dealership made two attempts to attach the original number plate, drilling extra holes in the boot lid rather than using the factory mounts provided. I'm putting electrical insulation tape over the holes to prevent dirt or moisture getting into the boot panel. Luckily, the new number plate will cover this damage. Here are the new full-size Euro plates. These are going to look a lot neater in the euro size mounting area. And here's your kit from Laken Plates. Possibly the most important item in the box is this warning label. It warns you to read our instructions, especially in the case of the Euro brackets, which use 3M command strips to provide additional security to the fitting. I'm fitting covers to our Euro plates, as you can see here. Next in the box are the brackets themselves and hanging off the end of the packaging are all the fittings you'll need to complete the job. These are packed in separate envelopes, appropriately enough labelled front and rear. Finally, here are the instructions we've warned you to read. In this case, there's an extra sheet which explains the correct procedure to using the 3M command strips. If your particular installation needs any different or extra steps, you'll find we've included instructions to guide you through the process. OK, your first step is to make sure we've sent you the correct kit. Line the bracket up with the mounting area and check that the mounting holes align and that the bracket matches the curve of the bodywork. The instructions explain how you can vary this curve if necessary. Our rear bracket fits with two metric threaded screws with nylon retaining washers. Here I'm installing them in the holes in the bracket. Now, somewhere in here I've got a screwdriver. Here we go. With some fittings, the screws don't have retaining washers, which makes things a bit fiddly. But in this case, I'm lucky, and it's easy enough to just screw the bracket into place. OK, that seems to be secure. No rattles. Here I'm simply checking the plate against the bracket. Euro-style plates are supplied without any mounting holes in them. Our covers have a pair of mounting holes in the top corners, so we need to drill matching holes in the plate. I found it easiest to place some masking tape over the corner you'll be drilling. This makes it easier to see your mark clearly. The Euro cover has three clips along its lower edge. Here I need to clip the plate into the cover so we can use the cover as our template. Now I can use a pen or pencil to mark through the hole and onto the masking tape. The next step is to use a centre punch or a sharp nail to make a tiny indent in the centre of the marking to stop the drill bit slipping. I like to drill a pilot hole with a small bit first. If you have a bench drill, or a very steady hand, this might not be necessary. Here I'm drilling the final hole with a 6mm or a quarter inch bit. It's important not to leave any rough edges either side of the plate. So here I'm using a countersunk tool to clean up the edges of the hole. Well, we're finally ready to fit our plate to the bracket. This is where we need to use the 3M command strips properly. Here I am checking where the strips will touch the back of the plate, as these are the areas which must be perfectly clean and grease free. I'm giving these areas a final wipe with the swab of isopropyl alcohol you'll find packed with your fitting kit. Now, back to the bracket. You'll notice the ends of each strip are curled up under themselves. This is so you can remove them cleanly if you ever need to. As a final check, make sure the tabs are nestled neatly into these recesses. The surface of the strips must be flat in order for them to bond properly. Luckily, I'm doing this on a warm sunny day, so the adhesive is at the correct temperature. If you're working in a cold environment, you must make sure the bracket and plate are at room temperature before completing this step. 
you might get a second person to hold a hairdryer for you. I'm peeling off the red cover from all three strips. This can be a bit fiddly, so take your time and be careful not to pull the strips from the bracket or to touch the sticky surface. Now I have to align the plate accurately with the bracket without allowing it to get stuck on the strips prematurely. I'm using the 4mm metric screws from the kit threaded into the nuts in the top corners of the bracket to hold it in place. Once I'm sure the plate is lined up properly, I can allow the lower edge to rest against the tape strips. I really do have to be careful here. If I get it crooked, I'm going to have a very difficult job resetting it. I mustn't press it down until I'm absolutely sure it's aligned. OK, the point of no return. I can now press firmly over the bonding areas to make sure the adhesive is contacting over as large an area as possible. I need to do this for about 30 seconds on each pad. Right, we're coming to the final step, fitting the covers. I can remove the screws I used when I was aligning the number plate, as these are the ones we used to hold the cover on. Here's the cover. It has three clips along the bottom edge as we saw earlier. These engage with notches in the bracket behind the number plate. It's a little bit fiddly, but the clips need to fit neatly into these notches. Once they do, the cover will almost snap into place. Using the screws I just removed, and the Allen key, or the security key if you're using the tamper-proof fittings, I can now finally tighten the cover and the job is completed.